Hi, this is Emily Singer Lucio, the ADA 504 coordinator for the University of Maryland. Hi, my name is Matthew Nolte. Um, I'm a student with a disability. I am a junior. Um, my major is cell biology and genetics. Um, and my, diag my primary diagnosis is unspecified genetic connective tissue disorder. Um, whenever I share that information, my frequent follow-up question is if it's lr Stanley syndrome, which it's not. Um, but I do have some like the same features. Um, I am a, I primarily use a wheelchair, um, but I can go sh short distances with my crutches. Um, but it's like, it's kind of hard for my body, so I don't always do that, um, you know, depending on how I feel. But. Thanks. Well, welcome, Matthew. We're happy to have you. Thank you. Um, so you've shared a little bit about your disability, and I really appreciate that and have, helping explain sort of that distinction about your disability. That's helpful. Tell me about a little bit about what it was like growing up with a disability. So when I was younger, I didn't have as many issues. Um, I think my experience was definitely a little bit different because my mom, um, she is very like anti-Western medicine. Um, and so like when I was younger, I have like a lot of digestive issues and my mom would just like send me to acupuncture and, you know, I very much realized for some people acupuncture is beneficial, but for me as like, you know, like an eight year old, it was not, not a pleasant experience, not something that really helped any of my symptoms. Um, but you know, as I grew up and my mobility started to get worse, um, and it's still like my mom still like was not really understanding of what was going on. Um, but it wasn't until I think like maybe my mid teens mm -hmm. where I started using mobility aids. Um, I started out with canes for a very short period of time because I was falling a lot. Um, and then later on from the canes, I had to move to crutches. Um, and I was on crutches probably for a good few years. Um, you know, in our, in our brains, I think time always gets a little distorted, but I think it was a few years. Yeah. Um, so one of the other conditions I have, I have, there's not really a name for it, but I have a like extreme like predisposition to um, pressure related nerve injuries. Okay. So with the canes, within the first two weeks of using the canes, I ended up with carpal tunnel syndrome in both of my wrists, which mm -hmm. if you're familiar, like, familiar with carpal tunnel very frequently, you see it in um, people who are older and maybe working like a desk job where they type a lot. Um, but yeah, I developed that. And then I had to, when I switched to my crutches, I developed cubital tunnel syndrome, which is like carpal tunnel, but at your elbow. Um, and then later on, I also developed radial tunnel, which I didn't know was a thing. Like I wasn't aware that existed. Um, but like since then I have, I've developed many other like nerve, like pressure injuries and they're, um, very frustrating to deal with. Yeah. Cause a lot of times, especially because I like need to use the mobility, so there's really like not a way around it. Yeah. But. Yeah. And I would assume that, um, I know a lot of, of individuals who use wheelchairs, um, have pressure sores in other areas from sitting for so right, long. Right. Yeah. So I would assume, so I, is it fair to say that, um, you try and switch devices, like switch from your wheelchair to your crutches to, to at least re, sort of change that sort of once in a while? So the pressure related injuries are typically in um, people with like spinal cord injuries, right. especially right. because since they, um, depending on like the level of their in injury, it may lack sensation. And so for them, it's like harder to tell whether or not they're developing a pressure tour. Um, but because, so, when you use a wheelchair, you have to do like pressure relief. So like for me, I would press down on my armrest and yep. raise up for a few seconds. Yep, I've seen a lot of that. Yeah. Um, and doing that in general just prevents pressure sores. But then also, you know, when I'm like in my dorm, being able to use my crutches to walk around in my dorm, um, like I've never had to deal with a uh, pressure, pressure sore or anything like that. Um, thankfully, because my mobility is a bit better. Um, so how old were you when you first began to realize you had a disability and what was that like? Maybe like 16. Um, Wait, I'm sorry, but hold on a second. But I thought you said that your mom took you to acupuncture at eight. Were you realizing things so then? So the acupuncture was mainly for like, I guess I don't, when I was having digestive, digestive issues when I was younger, Yeah. in my like head, I don't, 
I guess I don't think of that as like disability. I think because in my in my head at least, when I think of my disability, I like mainly think of my mobility issues. Um, I know like people would define their disabilities differently, mm-hmm. um, but I wouldn't like looking back. I wouldn't like put my digestive problems in like the disability category. Um, so you were able to walk until you were about sixteen. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, it's like falling a lot though. Um, and is, and is it degenerative? Is it going to continue to go? go so worse, that or? I'm not really sure. Okay. Um, it's hard to say. Um, I, the geneticist, she didn't really give me a answer on that because my condition, like, I don't have like a name for it. They just, you know, they did genetic testing and there's like, well, you meet, you have like all this criteria, but your criteria, like don't meet the criteria for any specific condition. Hmm. Um, so there's like a lot of questions up there. And then also with insurance. So the geneticist wanted to run this like whole panel of testing, but insurance, um, the insurance would only pay for testing for conditions that were were like lethal or would like significantly shorten my my lifespan mm-hmm. um and so the geneticist i mean she said okay sure we'll test for these i don't think you have them she tested for them i don't have them um which is why my my diagnosis kind of has like question marks around it interesting um so how was it when when you sort of started having to use a wheelchair or crutches as a 16 year old you said so so 16 is when i like was falling more to the point where i was like using canes mm-hmm. um i'm trying to think of like how long i actually use my canes for high school is a challenging time in and of itself for so many reasons that must have been challenging yeah so my high school experience was very different because i um had a lot of health issues and then also i struggled with like a lot of mental health issues when i was younger um i so i was in home and hospital for a little bit which is home and hospital is a program where like a teacher will like show up to your house like once a week Mm -hmm. um if you can't like attend school um and since it's like once a week you really don't learn that much um but i ended up they didn't have zoom back then (laughs) yeah yeah (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I ended up, uh, I dropped out um, in 11th grade, and then I immediately went to Anne Arundel Community College, okay. which was, like, immediately so much better, because, one, I could take online classes, and there was just, you know, public school, you know, you kind of need to be there, like, every day to be able to, you know, learn, um, but with... Um, with going to like a community college, it's just a very different experience, um, and just generally more like accommodating of like any sort of health issue. So, how did you find um, your friends were in terms of the shift in terms of your health um, issues? I would say they're pretty great, um, especially back then. Again, dealing with like more like mental health issues. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, because I had, like, a lot of stress because of my health, which I'm sure contributed to, like, my mental health. But, um, no, my, I had my best friend Hannah in high school. She was fantastic. I imagine um, you would probably learn pretty quickly who your friends, real friends were. Yeah. Um, so in high school, actually, so in ninth grade, I went to, I was in Glen Burnie High School, and I was in their magnet program called BEMA, Biomedical Allied Health. Okay. So I think, like, that just like automatically made people like a little bit more accepting at least or just like you know generally good about things but i um so 16 16 is what 11th grade Mm -hmm. yeah because i i i did not use a mobility when i was in high school um i did like deal with like health issues but um yeah because of dropping out um I never really had to like deal with that right um and then obviously like going to college um i want to say in general like people are a little bit like more mature um but so how do you think having a disability has impacted you differently at, at these different stages um I'd say it's definitely made my, my school experience very different so I'm 23 now, 
Um, but I, I started at community college when I was 16. Um, and so that's been very interesting because I was able to, because of my health, like spread classes out further. Like I pretty much always would try to spread it out over like this um, winter and like summer sessions as well, just so I can decrease my course load and just again like spread it out as much as possible. Um, so that's um, that's one way it's like made it very different for me. Um, I did, so I went back to my community college summer of 2022. And before that, I had taken like a two year break because um, that's when my mobility was like really declining. Mm. Um, so like 19, 20, about that age. Um, that's when, so it had gotten to the point with my like crutches, I just wasn't doing that much, wasn't like wanting to leave the house. Um, I deal with like a lot of a lot of pain in my joints um, and so like not wanting to put more stress on my joints like having you know my friends want to go to the mall and obviously the mall is a large place it requires a lot of walking um, so in general I was just like very avoidant of doing anything like that because I knew it would like make my pain worse and at that point my physical therapist she was like you know have you ever you know, talked with your doctor about using a wheelchair and at that point I think my mental view of disability was very different mm-hmm. um, like I viewed using a wheelchair as like like the worst possible thing like that could happen and I was very thankful my, my physical therapist Karen I love that woman to death she was just well, amazing. hopefully Karen is listening to this <laughs> I'll send it to her I have her email but um she was fantastic she um she worked with me and um, we ended up getting, so to get a wheelchair, it's um, kind of a complicated process. So you have to go to your doctor and your doctor has to write for a wheelchair eval, which is where you go to like a physical therapist who they look at all the different things um, that you would possibly like need with the wheelchair. So I went and got the wheelchair eval um, and that was, um, there's a lot of difficulties with that in and of itself, but um yeah, and then after really talking a lot with with Karen, she helped like kind of like shape my views to be different, um, helped me view you know a wheelchair as a tool, just like my crutches, um, and yeah, she changed my mindset. And then when I finally got it, I was like, wow, I can do so much more, <laughs> and I'm in so much less pain, and it just it really like I think I mean really once I got it. it change my view just seeing like, what I could and could not do w- w- like with my crutches alone versus using the wheelchair yeah it can open up a whole another world right but yeah. it, but it also is like relearning that world right because yeah. you, you grew up learning it on two feet yeah. and now you have to learn how to do things in a, with two wheels or four wheels yeah. right and so like the path you took to get someplace that you used to go pretty frequently that used to be sort of automatic right right uh, now you have to sort of stop and think, oh, wait, can I take that path? Because there yeah, may have been stairs definitely. in that path, right? So what's the other route I have to go? So my first wheelchair was a manual wheelchair, meaning like I had to push with my arms. Um, it had like a, it's called a power assist. Mm-hmm. So it's a little motor that's on the back of it. It's about like the size of like a two liter soda bottle. Uh, it's called a smart drive. And the power assist is great, but it's also awful. Um, mm-hmm. It can only like handle pretty like small like terrain increases. So if you're on something that's like even you know, mildly steep, um, they call it like a safety feature. But like the motor will just like cut out. Mm. It'll just like stop. <laughs> um, I can see that being a problem. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. Um, and the community I lived in was very hilly, and we lived on like a massive hill, which didn't make anything better. Um, I actually the so my mom she had like a I have like a little like basement apartment and she had a a concrete path like poured from I have like a walkout in the basement and she had from there directly to the street and so that's like pretty like flat terrain um so I'm able to get like from my little apartment to the street but typically what I have to do because of how steep it is is uh use my crutches to get up and then um I usually keep like one wheelchair inside and one in the car um my like 
my not custom wheelchair so it's just like a standard like hospital wheelchair i keep that um inside and then i keep my custom wheelchair in the car um and that that was like the system i mean if i'm if i would be home right now that'd still be the system i'd use because the accessibility um of very steep hills is not wonderful yeah that, um, that, and, and we certainly have a lot of them around here yeah yeah, yeah. Um, what have you found helpful to share about yourself with others? Um, I'd say with people who I'm like closer with, like friends, I you know will explain to them like I deal with a lot of chronic pain. Um, you know, a lot of times if I if I'm in a lot of pain and around my friends, I usually will like warn them and like, apologize if I'm a little like snappier than normal. Because um, you know, obviously dealing with like pain. It, has a significant impact on your mood. Yeah. Um, but it's probably the main thing I'd mention. Um, what do you wish other people knew or understood about you? Um, I mean, I guess just like strangers in general. So when I was younger, I think my view of like wheelchairs, so there's like in my head, there was two categories. You're either like elderly and you use a wheelchair or you're paralyzed and you use a wheelchair. And that's you know, really just because what you'd see like TV shows and movies, there's not, especially, you know, many years they go, disability representation in media, not the most fantastic thing. Mm-hmm. And so I think that also probably impacted like my view of like getting a wheelchair. Cause I was like, well, I'm not like paralyzed. Like I don't need a wheelchair. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think, you know, understandably because of just the media other people don't realize that many wheelchair users are not paralyzed and so like you know if i'm out places and you know you see me like move my legs adjust whatever and people will like stare and like get like really wide eyed and be like oh my gosh did you see that he moved his legs um so that's been yeah that'd probably be like the main thing if people could understand that you know there is a very wide range of disabilities a a wide range of even like why people use wheelchairs um like have you ever seen a movie called crip camp i have oh good with judy human yeah yeah that's a that's a great movie highly recommend it if people haven't seen it yeah i remember yeah i watched that many years ago what do you think of that movie i really loved it yeah it's great i like the camp scenes and yeah. It's just a great movie. Yeah, and just to, to let people know a little bit about it, it's a movie that talks it, that shows sort of the life of a of a group of um, of individuals with just different types, all different types of disabilities, um, at a camp, yeah. specializing in working with them um, over the summer, and how somewhat liberating it was for yeah. them, and um, really shows sort of what their day to day life was like. Yeah. Um, yeah. So just appreciate that, you know. Of course, they portrayed a very um, wide range of disabilities mm-hmm. um, again with like you know being considered like an ambulatory wheelchair user because I can get up and walk with my crutches um, yeah like I hope in the future more like a more wider range of disabilities like would be represented in like film like TV shows movies whatever um, just to like help people understand that you know, disability isn't, like, necessarily, like, a black and white thing. There's, with, like, many, many things, there's a huge spectrum. Um, So do you think people have sometimes have preconceived notions of what your disability is without asking? Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, Like, my my girlfriend and I, we went to Six Flags last weekend. And, um, you know, for Six Flags, I think it's always funny. So Six Flags, their accessibility is, like, really bad and when they build new things I just this kind of perplexes me they always choose to make like the main line not accessible like they put like there's a brand new roller coaster years ago and they put like stairs in the main entrance and just made like the exit wheelchair accessible I just I it perplexes me I think I think the reason they do that and maybe I'm wrong but it's funny because I just was at a a session the other day about ADA accessibility and they mentioned the regulations for amusement parks and um, uh, I, I, I think that's because people with disabilities can sort of bypass the line right by right. going up the exit ramp and be there and then yeah. they can get them into the specific car that that has the accessible seating in it right or whatever but kind of like kind of like fast pass or 
Quick right. queue or something like that, right? Unfortunately, just, um, Disney got yeah. rid of fast passes. Yeah, but but I but I get it, right? Because you want some sort of sense of normalcy, and not that anybody wants to wait in those horrendously long lines at an amusement park. But but I think there's part of people with disability who would sort of like that normal sort of experience and to be treated equally, yeah. right? Yeah, even just like because if it was a normal line, like at Disney World, like I can go on pretty and pretty much any like entrance, like I don't have to you know, take a separate route to get to the ride, which can be difficult in and of itself because usually the exits are not marked very well. Mm-hmm. It's usually the ride entrance that has a, a lot of markings around it. But um, yeah, just w- when something new is built, I just don't, I guess, you know, frequently disability is like an afterthought. Right. Um, like at my community college last year, I um, they just built a brand new life sciences building. And I had talked with the disability office and I said, like, you know, we paid this group to come in and make sure everything's accessible, blah, blah, blah. And um, I got into my genetics class on the first day. And I had, like, talked with, again, the, the coordinator. She's like, yep, there's a table in there, blah, blah, blah. I came up and, like, the all the lab benches were, like, I don't know, like, neck height for me. I'm like, ah, yes, I'm so glad they paid this group to come in and make sure everything's accessible. Wow. It just made me laugh, like. I don't know. I hope they got their money back from that group. <laughs> I, w- I was sharing a, a cartoon with somebody the other day. Um, it has um, a custodian outside of a school shoveling snow off the stairs, and there's a group of students at the bottom of the stairs um, waiting to be able to get in, right? And and the group is a um, representative of a, a variety of students with disabilities, including one who uses a wheelchair. And um, there's a ramp on the on the building as well. And one of the students said to the custodian, he said, can you shovel the ramp? And he said, I will when I'm done with the stairs. Yeah. And the kid said, but if you shoveled the ramp right. first, then all of us would be able to get in, right? right? Um, um, and, I, and I think it's interesting because, you know, more and more we're seeing buildings designed with flat level entrances in, yep. right, and automatic doors, and how beneficial that is to so many people, right? Not just people who use wheelchairs, exactly. but just so many different people. And um, and it's it's great because then it means that you don't have to go a separate route yeah. than your friend, right? You don't have to go around to a different entrance. Um, you guys can go together in the regular main entrance, right? Kind of like the line issue at the amusement park, yeah. right? I um. Yeah, no, that's that's definitely a very good point. Just throughout the years, how things that were originally like, designated for people with disabilities, how it ends up like benefiting just the population. I think it's called like universal design. Mm-hmm. Sometimes that's what it's doing. called. Yep. But like I believe, um, like texting like was originally created for people who are deaf, and now of course everyone like, texts and um, you know things like curb cuts. If you like anywhere, if someone has anything on wheels. It's you know just a pain in the butt having to deal with a normal curb, and just the fact that there are curb cuts everywhere makes it easier for able-bodied people as well. Um, you know, and like the the buttons to automatically open doors. If you're carrying a bunch of stuff and like can't open the door, you have a button there. Like it just things like that work out for everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely, I agree with you. You know, I think the more we design buildings to be accessible for everybody, um, and just be sort of aware, right, of of everything that around us and how it affects everybody. I mean, all of us are aging, right? And so it's not just people with disabilities now, but as people age, you know, who knows what kind of ailments people have that may prohibit right. them from being able to go up or down stairs or push, you know, or open a heavy door or something like that. So, yeah, I think that's great. I mean, all, all of those things are really beneficial to not only people with disabilities, but pretty much everybody. So, um, and, and of course, you know, there's the other benefit of, wanting people with disabilities to feel welcome and a part of the community, right? And all of those things have that added value, yeah. right? Um, what would you say have been some of your biggest challenges and how have you worked through them? Um, it's a tough question. Biggest challenges. Um, <laughs> we need a second to think of this one. I mean... The first thing that comes to mind is really just like dealing with the general like public. I don't. It's a very like vague answer, but just I I guess like fighting for my right to have access. 
I, that would be like, at least in terms of disability, that'd be like one of my biggest challenges. Um, you know, obviously everywhere you go, especially with buildings that are older or, and you know, of course in communities where um, like the average income is lower, just disability, like access is immediately worse. Um, I so living like in Annapolis I mean obviously downtown Annapolis is is historic area so accessibility there is 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 sad but um I like I kind of get it for historic areas like people have tried um brick sidewalks there yeah no those are those are rough I think with that um things for for an able-bodied person to evaluate an area and in their mind like this is not answering your question whatsoever um it's okay you have a body person to go into an area and try to identify things that are accessibility issues is i think it's very hard unless they're like very familiar with disability if they've been like a caregiver um or you know had to maybe use like a wheelchair themselves i think they better understand it but um Especially for like I don't know, like ramps like I got in downtown Annapolis, one of the like ice cream stores down there. It used to be like two steps. And what they did is they like shaved it down. They shaved those two steps down into a ramp, if you can call it a ramp. Um, you know, like for wheelchair access for manual chairs, it's one twelfth slope, mm-hmm. which means for every inch of rise, you need twelve, 12 inches of yeah, right. twelve inches of uh, distance, and um, so something that's. Uh, very like angled up like that was probably about like a 35 degree angle up it's like not actually accessible but i think in their mind like when they were you know shaving the stairs down they're like oh this will be perfect but um i don't know i i'd probably yeah i probably say that's like the toughest thing is just like fighting for for my right for for access um especially i don't know like the shopping center um, where I could go. I was like there one day picking up um, fabric for my grandmother from Joanne Fabrics. And I, you know, I crossed the street to go up the curb cut. I hadn't realized this. So, you know, the curb cuts, they have the like tactile boards there um, for people who are um, blind or have low vision. Yep. And right after that panel, there was just a big like gap and i wasn't going really fast and my my front wheels my little caster wheels very small we also made like a four inch um diameter and they just like got stuck in that rut and because i was going up my wheelchair ended up like tipping forwards i got dumped out of my chair not a good time i wouldn't recommend it um it sounds terrible i've seen that happen before too yeah i um so i went to join fabrics and i asked you know i got the fabric of course um, but then I, I also asked for the phone number for like whoever like owns the shopping center or maintains the shopping center, and I called them and I talked to them like, hey, like that um, the curb cut like there's a big gap after it. Like, could you please fill the gap? And the guy he got like really angry at me, and then he like tried to tell me that like the shopping center was grandfathered in, and like my dude like that hasn't been a thing since like 2010. Um, and then he tried to tell me that that curb cut wasn't the ADA curb cut. The other curb cut was the ADA curb cut. I just, I don't know. I, I laughed at it because, like, you're kidding, right? Like, that's not, what do you mean the non-ADA curb cut? It was just, it was just silly. But he was just saying, like, anything he could possibly say to get out of having to, like, make modifications. It just, if I had, like infinite energy like I'm, I'm very passionate about accessibility if I had infinite energy I would just I'd probably spend my time going around places <laughs> and finding all like the the access problems and I don't know doing something to like hopefully change that to make it better when again not only for people with disabilities but like you know imagine like a lady who has like a stroller she's yeah. going up there and the front wheel of the stroller gets caught yeah I mean, hopefully she'd have enough control that the baby would remain in the stroller. But <laughs> Let's hope so. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah I'd, I'd definitely say, I mean, other than, like, just dealing with my health issues in general, like, dealing with chronic pain is, it's it's difficult. It's, you know, 
especially if you wake up one day and your pain's really bad and but you have like a lot of stuff to do and a lot of times you just have to to power through it and then sometimes you can't power through it sometimes it you know gets to be too much but I think one thing you know when talking to this is like a whole separate issue but talking to my friends who have disabilities who um you know, like I'm, I'm white and that also you know, that gives me a certain amount of privilege of like when I'm going to see doctors um, I'm, I'm male that also gives me like a certain amount of privilege talking to my friends who are women who deal with like chronic pain like my experience going to like pain management versus their experience it's like it's genuinely like appalling it's 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 sad like I went to pain management many years ago and um, it was generally like easy for me to work with the doctor to get to where a place where my pain was like manageable enough where I could continue on with like my daily activities I talked to my friends who are women and their experience is like so vastly different um it's just it's it's sad like they go into pain management and especially if they're like dealing with like, a male provider and it you know they just like don't want to work with them to get to a place where their pain is better yeah it's it's a rough world out there sometimes M- matthew do you have anything else you want to share with people about overall about your experience about you um i don't think so um <laughs> that's pretty much it i am um, obviously i'm i'm a talker i can talk for a while <laughs> but there's nothing that specifically you know pops into my head other than um, if you're interacting with someone who has a disability and they make a joke about their disability, in general, like you can laugh. You don't you don't have to avoid laughing because they they probably want you to laugh. I think that's that's a good point. I think a lot of people don't know that that's yeah. Or just like uncomfortable enough to laugh. I don't like when I make jokes. If okay. Not that I like listen in on people's conversations, but I'm like walking by a group well, of people. Oh, the reality is you probably do. <laughs> What? Oh, no way. <laughs> I would never live, like, walk and grab past a group of people. Um, it's another, like, example. I was walking past a girl, uh, a group of girls, and the one girl, she was complaining about, uh, she had, like, shin splints. <laughs> I just went back in my chair, went past, and I was like, ugh, can't relate. <laughs> <laughs> but they, like, held in their laugh until it's, like, further away. And, um... I just, I hope they know I'm, like, saying that specifically to get a laugh. <laughs> yeah, that, that's probably the main thing I hope people know. Yeah, yeah, no, I appreciate that. Well, Matthew, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us yeah, today. Yeah, of course, been great. this is great. Yeah, no, you're you're a great advocate. And this is, thank you. Yeah, no, this is great. Well, um, I do hope that this conversation opens people's eyes to what it's like to live with a disability. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, each of the, this is the fourth in the series that we've done, and so mm-hmm. they've each been very different. Um, and I want to just remind people that for more information about resources at University of Maryland about disability, um, you can go to the accessibility.umd.edu um, website. Um, and um, thanks, everyone, for listening today, and thank you, Matthew, for joining us. Of course.